Hello, my dear watercolor lover. I'm very glad to see you here. I guess we have something in common. Do you also enjoy watching art hauls and swatching videos? Get comfy and let's start. Today I want to show you what I bought some time ago in the Italian art store called Intingo. It's not the hugest haul, but there is some variety. I just checked off some brushes from my wish list and spoiled myself with watercolor tubes that probably I didn't need, but oh how enticing they were. A little preface. This summer I bought Sennelier Aqua Mini Set that I actually planned to review. Hmm. If you are interested, let me know. I'll be happy to film because I really like Sennelier. I also have some Jackson's half pens that I enjoy painting with, but Sennelier watercolor tubes were calling my name and I wanted to try more colors from their range. So this is how I ended up with more watercolors. Let me share this joy with you. In a few minutes, we'll swatch these beauties together. I'm starting with the only Schmincke tube that I got. It's the Hillier Turquoise. It's my first PB16 color. I'm really curious how much it is different from the turquoise you can mix with PB15 and PG7. I picked this color in addition to something else. Spoiler, my first Schmincke palette. But it should have a dedicated video. PB16 seems a good choice for a blue in a CMY palette. I have seen Teo Yichi pairing it with PY150 and PR122. I have the other two colors from White Knights, and I will be curious to color some of my pencil sketches with this trio. Alternatively, I thought to pair it with PY154 and PV19. Do you have a favorite CMY palette setup? Let me know what is your choice in the comments. Next, I have two tiny Windsor and Newton tubes yellow ochre and sepia. I didn't want to get earth colors from the Sennelier, because they're not what the company is famous for. I still got their burn sienna though, and maybe I shouldn't have. I never tried Cotman yellow ochre, but I love this professional one that I got. If you have the Cotman one, or if you tried both, what do you think? Are they similar? If I remember correctly, the Cotman one is on PY42 and it's opaque. Windsor and Newton have three other ochres in their range, brown, gold and yellow light. I need to say that the gold ochre looks very very nice on the swatches that I have seen online. Moving on to sepia. I'm curious to use it in underpaintings and in value studies, that I never do. I really like colors, so I was never attracted by grisaille, but maybe with such a lovely sepia I can try this technique. From the swatches I looked at online, Da Vinci's sepia is the prettiest one, but these watercolors are not available in Europe. Truth be told, Windsor & Newton has a very nice sepia too. And again, if you have experience with their student version, please let me know. 
I doubt it has a wide value range and can go as deep as the professional one. Finally, the culprit, the main character of today's video, Senilie. How I was selecting Senilie watercolors? I made an exception and didn't judge the watercolors by number of pigments used and even picked a color with white in it. I kinda thought if the company spent years working on special recipes and perfect ratios to add the color to their range and to be proud of it, who am I to judge why they put three pigments in it? I also wanted to get the triad of their signature colors, the ones that bear the company name. But Sinelia Red was sold out. And instead of Sinelia Yellow Light or Deep, I chose another yellow they are praised for, Yellow Sophie. However, I succeeded getting Sinelia Blue, that is a red shade of Phthalo Blue. This decision made me delete Indanthrin from the shopping list. Sinelia Green is PB36, and it's not something I was looking for. Instead, I chose Olive Green and Forest Green. Forest green is just majestic, and olive green is a much prettier option than the sub green, that is a bit dull in my opinion. Sinelia grey seemed a nice color, but warm grey seemed to me a better choice. It seems a useful color for urban sketching, something like buff titanium. Same goes for greenish amber, that is actually not amber at all, the English translation is off. In many color names of Sennelier, this is actually burnt green earth. By the way, I have heard many people like the green earth by Sennelier and find it useful in muting reds. Maybe one day I will get it too, but not today. Sennelier orange is another color that company gave its name to. But it is so bright and so vivid that it actually scares me. Red orange and Chinese orange, in my opinion, are more attractive. Red orange was sold out, unfortunately, and there were some other items that were sold out. But I found about it only the next day I placed the order, and the package was already on its way to me. I was reimbursed, but was left upset not to have a chance to get another tubes instead. So I placed another order for additional tubes. I will swatch the colors in this video too. As you may already know, or guess by the name, Sennelier is a French company. Brand's name is an actual surname of the founder, Gustave Sennelier. He opened his shop where he sold and in fact produced the colors in Paris in 1887. We are lucky that the shop is still open and welcomes everyone at Quai Voltaire. A smartly chosen location, because it's just a five-minute walk from the École des Beaux-Arts. It's a very important art school. Just think that painters like uh, Engel, Degas, Monet, Moreau, Matisse, Renoir, Sisley, Seurat, and many, many other famous artists studied. What I really like about the story of this brand and its founder is that Gustav was taking orders and creating custom-made colors for the famous painters. He was a true professional and cared a lot about the quality of his products. In 1912, he published a book with instructions on paint making. His grandson, who later worked in the same shop, was the one who invented the oil pastels upon the request of Pablo Picasso. I'm curious how much the modern L'Aquarelle line is different from the original watercolors that were produced in the end of the 19th century. If I'm not mistaken, in the modern watercolor line, there is more honey. I appreciate this fact about the watercolors, because they are easy to re-wet. But I also understand that someone in a humid climate may find this blessing to be a curse. Sennelier states that the honey gives brilliance and smoothness to their paints, reinforces the longevity of the colors and their luminosity. For myself, I can just say that it's a pleasure to use these watercolors, both in pens and in tubes. I know that botanical artists appreciate the layering abilities and the vibrancy of these watercolors. I think the wide range of reds plays an important role too. In total, there are 98 colors in L'Aquarelle line. Let's look at how competitive is the price of the Senelier tubes. I will compare them to other European paints sold on Jackson's art website. 
Let's look at the very common phthalo blue and cobalt blue as a more expensive pigment. The tubes come in different volume, so let's also compare the price of the half pens. As a result of this comparison, Rembrandt watercolors are more affordable among the professional watercolors, and Sennelier is very close in their pricing. As I have expected, Schminke is a deluxe option. But you need also to understand that the price of the paints is different in different countries and also in different shops. Here in Italy I found my Mary Blue and Senelier to be more affordable. Still they are artist grade watercolors and they cost respectively. I think in USA all of them are just out of budget for many people, like Daniel Smith and Core here in Europe. I would like to encourage you to buy art supplies that are local to you. The watercolor paints are not different enough to add your order to other parcels flying from overseas. It all contributes to the unnecessary CO2 emission. I'm not better than anybody else and I also enjoy new art supplies and I love watching art haul videos and swatching. But I also hesitate about doing more videos on art hauls. Even if I don't order a lot and very often, I still think that I might push somebody towards a redundant purchase. What is your opinion on that matter? What do you think of the massive art haul videos? Don't they contribute to the non-sustainable excessive consumption? Here are all the swatches of my newly purchased Senelier watercolors. 
I thought it could be useful to compare them to the colors of the Aqua Mini set that many people might have gotten as their first watercolor palette or first Cinelier watercolors. However, I don't use the Aqua Mini set on its own. I used the watercolors from the set to make my portable palette that was based on the palette with Jackson's half pens. I have 12 colors in my portable palette, and they are enough, but why not to make it 18 if the half pens enter? So let's vamp it up. But before, let's fill the half pens. Some tubes had the binder separated. I mixed a bit inside the tube with a tool, and then I additionally mixed some stubborn colors in the pens. Now I think that some swatches would have been better if I had done them after I mixed well the pigment back into the binder. Nickel yellow and cadmium red purple had lots of binder exiting the tube, so I poured them into full pens. Then something awful happened. I somehow knocked out these pens and the watercolor poured out and mixed in a muted peachy color on the table. I ended up filling a half pen with nickel yellow because I really wanted to add this color to my portable palette. I don't use cadmiums and cobalts outside of home, so I didn't add the cadmium red purple even if I like the color a lot. The only exception in this palette is PB35. I really like it and I use it for the skies. Maybe I will be okay with stellar blue and ultramarine. It's just a habit. What blues do you use most when painting skies? When I was filling the half pens, I noticed that the paints had different consistency. I think it depends on the pigments. Anyway, they all dried up in the pens similarly. Can confirm now, because I'm doing the voiceover later. These paints are so easy to re-wet, they are always ready and waiting for you. Unlike the Cotman's that become dry as rocks. I will give the Cotman watercolors another chance, because I finally got my hands on glycerin. Sometimes I don't paint with professional watercolors, because I think that the idea is not worthy enough, or I just want to experiment, or simply color for fun. In this case, having student-grade watercolors is useful to me. I don't feel like a golem with the ring, I don't need to save these paints for better times. Tell me, am I the only one like this? Or do you also feel like using every day your precious expensive watercolors is extravagant? What do you think of the colors I picked for my portable palette? Is there anything you would suggest me to change? Maybe I picked too many reds. Have to paint flowers this spring or switch them later? I will try the paints in action. I chose an original painting by Marie Laurencin. I really like her works and I like the figure of the goddess Diana. I think that the original is done with oil. But anyway, I'm not trying to do a copy. It's more an homage to the French painters. I will start with layering some colors to see what is the closest color match to the skin of Diana. Since I'm doing a voiceover, I will ask you already now to keep your hopes very low. The paper I chose is not suited for watercolors, so it will be a complete disaster that I will try to save with colored pencils later. To continue with the coloring the squares for the future layering, I need another brush. The sharp point was not a good pick. I still decided to show you the footage. Maybe it will make somebody feel better if a similar situation happens. It just proves that watercolor paper is very important. 
maybe even more important than getting professional paints over the student grade ones. I will definitely experiment more with the skin tones on a designated paper. I'm especially interested in getting naturally looking mid and dark tones. Any suggestions? As for the Caucasian skin tones, I think we will have here some nice color mixes. Stay tuned! I liked mixes of cool reds both with yellow ochre and nickel yellow. Venetian red diluted on its own in a pretty subtle pink. I don't have much experience in portraiture, so I as well might be saying some nonsense now. By the way, here is the watercolor piece. And here is my attempt to save it with colored pencils. Now I really want to take a sheet of watercolor paper and do some more painting, especially in glazing technique, since it's an Elia we are talking here about. But as for this video, we reached the end. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of Senelia watercolors and have a nice day. See you later. Bye.